Congratulations are in order for Lucid Motors who got some EPA certification tests done on the Lucid Air Dream Edition, both the performance and range options, as well as the Lucid Air Grand Touring. And the range numbers are pretty dang incredible, record-breaking to say the least. I'm just really, really hoping they can actually deliver these vehicles soon. But yeah, the range version of the Dream Edition clocked in 520 miles, estimated by the EPA, and the performance version was around 471 miles while the Grand Touring ended up getting 516 miles of range. So it's amazing to see numbers in an electric vehicle finally breaking the 500 mile mark and I was actually really excited for the official EPA tests for Lucid because obviously it's very simple to just pack more batteries into a vehicle and say hey hey look the range is further now but I wanted to see how efficient Lucid could make their vehicles especially now seeing the refreshed Model S the current range can and I'm still gonna call them the king because those vehicles are out. People have taken delivery of them. I'm not gonna give Lucid the crown just yet until the vehicles have officially delivered, but the refreshed Model S has a lower drag coefficient than the Lucid Air, and given they have still a very aerodynamic design, but not quite as good as the Model S, I wanted to see how efficient they could be, and it looks like at least the longest range version at 520 miles has about the same miles per gallon equivalent of a long range Model Y, but of course it's not as simple to just achieve the same range as a Model Y when you want the total range to be over 500 miles, so I'm not trying to undermine their accomplishment, that is still incredible that you can pack a battery in a fairly large sedan that's over 100 kilowatt hours and still achieve the same energy efficiency of a long range Model Y, which has a far smaller battery pack overall. This is mostly in thanks to Lucid's exclusive 900 volt architecture alongside their battery management system, but I was comparing some of the energy efficiency numbers that the EPA posted directly against the long range Model S, which is obviously barely breaking the 400 mile range mark, and I noticed something that didn't quite add up because everyone on the internet is crediting what Lucid said like over a year ago now, which was that their vehicles are achieving this insane range by using a 113 kilowatt hour battery pack. So the tremendous milestone that they were bragging about is like, okay, the battery is 13% larger than a Tesla Model S, while the range is over 20% further, so that's a pretty big breakthrough in efficiency. But especially looking at the performance version of the Lucid Air Dream Edition, it actually isn't as efficient as I was expecting to get these insane numbers, which, don't get me wrong, the range is still great, and I'm excited for these vehicles to be delivered, but I'm curious if Lucid is actually using larger battery packs than they originally thought, because these numbers don't lie. I know that the performance version is going to have more horsepower, so it's going to consume more energy. So I'm not trying to say it's a worse vehicle, I'm just saying the efficiency doesn't lie, and the miles per gallon equivalent is lower than that of the Model S, both for city and highway driving. We see higher energy consumption with the performance version of the Dream Edition, and yet the range is 471 miles, which is not a 13% range increase over the long range Model S. That's more of like an 18% range increase, and that's a assuming, and that's assuming you would achieve the exact same efficiency of the Long Range Model S, which they didn't on this particular trim. The efficiency is just a tad bit lower, so my guess, a lot of speculative work on my part, but just looking at the efficiency of these vehicles, is that Lucid is probably using a battery pack closer to 120 kilowatt hours, not 113, because if they were still using 113 or 112, with the present energy efficiency that the EPA is posting, they would not be reaching range numbers this high. Not trying to say that the vehicles are bad or that the accomplishment is not amazing. It's still, I think, a great thing for the EV community as a whole to say, yeah, there are some EVs out there that can go over 500 miles on a charge and still be recharged at, you know, over 300 kilowatts, and that means you can basically drive this thing at highway speeds for seven or eight hours straight. I've done that myself. I don't personally enjoy it. I would much rather take a few breaks along the road trip, but still, having the option out there, especially for the those willing to pay for it, I think is still a great thing. But I would love to see a teardown reveal exactly how large these battery packs are, because if your energy efficiency is objectively lower than that of a refreshed Model S, but you're getting more than 13% more range, that means that you have to be packing more energy in the car somewhere. So maybe the test is busted or something's wrong with it, but I would love to see Lucid be a bit more upfront with what the battery packs are. And also, I think a lot of people on Twitter are unnecessarily freaking out about 
about this. Like, I saw the tweet Lucid made about breaking the 500 mile mark, and so many replies are just like, sell your Tesla stock, Tesla's screwed, Elon Musk, what are you doing? Everyone's panicking at Tesla right now, but I genuinely don't think that's the case at all, because for one, these uh, vehicles that are achieving 520 miles of range, and the performance version with 471 miles of range, they're only making a limited amount. They're already sold out, so if you want to talk about vehicles with insane range that you can actually buy, yeah, you can't buy the Dream Edition anymore. They're not taking reservations for them, and I think the goal is to make, like, under 600 of them by the end of this year, so they're not selling in particularly high volume. I'm sure there are several thousand refreshed Model S's that have already been delivered, and many more thousand to come. The only vehicle that is included in the EPA test that you can actually reserve today is the Lucid Air Grand Touring, and that's not supposed to come out until sometime next year, and even though that one is supposed to be produced at higher volume, it's still $140,000. In other words, it's more expensive than every Tesla available today, so yeah, the most expensive EV goes the furthest. I don't think that necessarily is a threat to Tesla, because you can get a 400-mile EV for $90,000 with the Model S, and I'm not trying to say that's a better vehicle, but there may be the argument of better value or what really do you care about? Do you care about the autonomy features? Do you care about the infotainment system with that large 17-inch center display? And do you like having that first-party supercharging access? Or do you want to keep using Electrify America, which statistically has not had a very great track record with being reliable for a lot of VW and Ford owners? So you do have to put up with some other things if you do end up going with the Lucid Air. Although, I'm not trying to say it's a bad option. Obviously, if you prefer prefer the interior design being more premium, if you prefer having a full steering wheel instead of a yoke, and if you prefer having gear stocks, the Grand Touring is going to be a fantastic option for people out there that want that type of vehicle. I just definitely would not say it's a threat to Tesla. If anything, it's just kind of street talk to brag about how one brand has longer range than the other, but the total range of the vehicle is still only one piece of the total equation. The other part of road tripping experience does come down to charging network availability and reliability and hopefully you know Tesla will start opening up the supercharging network to third parties but we still don't know how fast the Lucid Air is going to be able to charge at superchargers whether or not they'll give them full access like they do with Tesla's and you'll be able to charge up to 250 kilowatts or will they limit you and charge you a bit slower and the Lucid Air theoretically is supposed to be able to charge up to you know 300 or 350 kilowatts but so far there's very very few Electrify America stations that are actually showing that feature available that actually can support charge rates that high. And you'll notice if you compare on route planners and that type of thing that between 400 mile EVs and 300 mile EVs on extended road trips, the range doesn't actually result in you saving that much time. What saves you more time is having a fast charger to get you those miles back in an efficient manner. So what I'm trying to say is if you have a 500 mile range and you're taking like a thousand mile road trip or more, if you're stuck having to charge at 150 kilowatts and you can't get as many miles back as quickly as someone else who can get 250 kilowatts, that added range actually isn't going to help you as much as you may think. You're going to be saving probably only half an hour to an hour on an extended road trip. So basically, I think the internet is too obsessed with range figures. I think that after 400 miles, it all starts to blend together a little bit with road trips. Surely it's more helpful in cold climates and if you're driving the vehicle with insane acceleration and you're driving at highway speeds for for a long period of time and there's a lot of winds or a lot of rain and that kind of thing obviously your range is going to fluctuate a lot so that's why i can understand a lot of people saying i want as much range as possible because i know under certain circumstances i'm only going to be getting 60 to 50 percent of that epa range but tesla definitely does not see any issue here because their refreshed model s is still severely back ordered and because they're using 1865 cells in a more dated architecture with the model s and x design like tesla said those are far cheaper to build than they're actually charging and I have to imagine the profit margins on the Model S and X are incredibly thick whereas Lucid I'm not so sure because they're putting a lot of money into their smaller more efficient powertrains and their redesigned battery packs and they're in the startup phase right now so their vehicles of course are being priced much much higher than Tesla's and I have to imagine because they're using bigger battery packs and they're using 2170 cells and they have to find all new suppliers for their vehicle they're gonna have a harder time finding profitability than Tesla is. So range numbers don't necessarily make or break a company, but overall, this is still a great thing for Lucid, and I think it could be an excellent feature.
feature that sets them aside from the competition. Knowing that you have the best range in an EV would definitely be appealing to a lot of people willing to pay $140,000 for their next vehicle. What do you guys think of Lucid Air hitting their EPA range numbers? And can you help me understand how they're able to rock 113 kilowatt hour pack and yet have worse efficiency than a refreshed Model S and still get far more range? Like, help me understand what went wrong there. But thank you all for watching. Hope you have an excellent rest of your day. Take care.